Welcome back to another episode of a very British space program. Uh, this week we've got two contracts to fly past other planets, uh, and with a with a little upgrade to our Newton craft, we might make it. Right, welcome back. So here we are. We are launching a Red Princess Two, uh, sorry, Red Princess Four B Two B. God, that wouldn't work, would it? A Two B, um, and this is going to be trying to complete our final uh, satellite first mission, and this is going to be our our communication satellite. So this is the UK NECS One A, and it's using a Red Bus One uh, A. Um, satellite bus again uh, and it is the 1st of February 1960 so we're in the 1960s how exciting and uh, this this craft is, is pretty much a workhorse now we're going to probably upgrade it as, a, as tech improves but there's not much more for it to go upgrade wise the the upper stage can probably be refined a little bit um, give it a bit more control I'd love a restart ability but we don't have an engine that restarts so that's not going to be a situation for this um, the Spectre engines are doing okay and you know not too bad so here what we're going to do is we're going to cut the engine out and then we're just going to do our little coast so unlike uh, the previous episode where we had a slight issue with the coast stage and in as in them um, yeah we hot staged and we did need to um, this one we just coast a little bit use a little bit of RCS then fire the the final engine to bring us into circularization this final engine's got a bucket load of power in it so it can it can just do what it needs to whenever it needs to we get into orbit keep burning until we get our our apple ups to where we need to then we're going to swing the craft round and uh, we just speed up to our apple ups and then we use the rcs systems which are running on http just to to bring us into the correct orbit and the good thing is we don't have to bring extra tankage for our HTP because we're using it for the engine and there we go in orbit beautiful spinning around completing its contract superb yep wonderful right next we are sending on the 2nd of February the white javelin 1c up again to a nice easy 120 kilometer contract this is with Matthew West in the command seat as always um, he seems to be the one that gets all the flights with this craft and uh, yeah it's a uh, it's a really nice little little flight it's it's not too high our main aim for this is to was to try and get speed you want to see you want to try and continue to develop this this re-entry profile with speed because we're, we're looking at going higher and faster and, and if we get some boost behind this as we get more capacity we're going to be coming in faster and want to know, you know, can this, this aircraft design actually cope with this? So as you see, he comes down nice and easy. We get a little sort of um, slip guide around. We just had it about about 38 kilometers and we just we just go back up. And this is something we've been trying to develop with our with our sort of flight characteristics. Can we actually skip the craft back up into the atmosphere just a little bit so we can work some energy off it because we don't want to overload all of the surfaces with heat and then here you see he's just practicing some of his turns controlling that again we don't want to land in the water so we're just doing some turns and just practicing about how we can bleed off speed nice and high up in the atmosphere um, without basically without actually retaining control of the craft because one of the big concerns we have with this craft is it's unpowered once it's finished its, its burn so we need to make sure it's semi maneuverable on return and then we just got to come down for our landing and of course we're in Australia it's nice and flat according to the uh, height maps here I'm not entirely sure it's accurate we should I would really love to get some really accurate ones because it would stop me doing this um, I'd have to probably just parachute it down or actually use a runway um, so we come down and again he's doing some little s turns there just to, to break, break, take off speed because we are approaching the big lake area and we're just coming down and he's going to pull up and this this looks like it's going to be the easiest of landings doesn't it it's just going to be you know we've practiced this now he's experienced it's fine however yeah we put the air brakes on we're slowing down everything looks perfect matthew's relaxing nice and calm oh oh what was that oh oh we've lost a wing we lost yeah well, we, 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 we didn't destroy the craft. He didn't do a, uh, a carol, you know, there's still a bit of a craft there. However, this is likely to be the end of the uh, the Javelin 1C because the Javelin 2 is a, we feel is probably a better long-term investment for, for this. However, 23 days later, Matthew's back in the craft. Yeah, that's right. He's um, he's had it patched up. We haven't even painted it. And um, 
we uh, we strapped some some jet engines on it because we have a mission and that mission was to get to 620 meters per second at 11 between 11 and, and 13 kilometers and Matthew believes that the Javelin 1C or Javelin 1X as we're now going to call it um, can be reborn as a high speed sort of test craft so so this is what we've done we, we don't want to invest in developing a new craft so after after and let me just get the maths around this I think it was 20 24 days 23 days of repair work we we repaired the bits of wing on one side and the other and we literally did this in the in the hangar we took it in we repaired this we stuck them on we didn't have, to, I have time to paint them they're still they're still metal colored we stuck some jet engines on the back emptied out the fuel tanks and put some some just pure kerosene instead of HTP put some air vents on the front we just ripped them off one of our other craft obviously and this thing just goes up like a I would say like a rocket but it's it's not like a rocket it's been like a rocket it's now like a plane um, superb little flight there um, noisy much noisier than its original form shall we say Matthew is loving it he's thinking it's brilliant um, mix it beautifully up to its its target altitude gets up to its target speed all is good we like it and then he just does a high-speed turn because you know what he's trying to prove this design is still f functional um, both this design and the Javelin 2 design are fighting for shall we see say the next generation so one of them will become the uh, the model for what we move, do moving forward at the moment it looks like it could be the Javelin 2 but this is a very nice little uh, demonstration of, of what this how maneuverable this craft is it does have that cross-range capability that Javelin 2 does not have the Javelin 2 will come in and land and it does not have the ability to do this it does not have cross-range capability um, so here we go he's just playing around with it we, we considered going all the way to the space and we could have I could have actually spent some time doing it however this craft is already patched up and the idea of taking a patched up repaired not quite great aircraft over to the space center and potentially crashing it into one of the buildings and costing me a lot of money to fix was not something I really wanted to do so he's just gonna plop it down there nice and easy isn't that great so that's uh, that's, uh, that's another little first for us right so 6th of march 1960 we're sending up another of our oculus craft um we're going to do quite a few of these i think well we don't have quite a few there's, there's a couple more to go and this is, is literally uh just going to to, to gather science it, it is very much um about surveying the british empire getting the pictures getting the postcard pictures we've got to fund our um our our future with this with this mission so we're just sending it up and it's one of those things where i would love to have actually just sent up one craft and done all of this and i probably could have i think if we'd have used a uh, a white trident we could have probably sent up four or five of these these camera systems with the batteries for them with multiple return ca capsules and we could have just you know one by one done it and and returned them one after the other and i think that would have been really cool however you launch from spade adam we at that point did not have a suitable launch pad for that 150 ton rocket so yeah we are building one and it's literally almost finished in, in fact it'll be finished for next episode and you better see uh, why we need 150 tons in spade adam so this goes around in orbit and does its thing and then after a day or so it basically if i don't even know if it was a day i think it was a few hours after a few hours a few orbits it de-orbits de itself you've seen this before um it's becoming sort of a standard thing uh, while in orbit however we did hear that the usa had sent up its first solar probe in the form of pioneer 5 that was on the on the 11th of march um, um it went into interplanetary space between earth and venus um so it seems that we're actually being being caught at the moment by um by the USA as well now which is a little concerning because we've got you know the USA doing that we've got uh, other stuff developing in the USSR we can't talk about because you know our, our, our men are um, at risk if we start divulging information from them but it seems that they're trying to develop something quite considerably further ahead than we are and um, yeah anyway so we return to the surface and, and land in uh, in Canada land or Canadian and Canadian land yeah we'll call it Canadian land uh, the, the the Dominion of Canada, part of the fine British Empire. Well, it's not. It's not. It's, it's a Commonwealth member. But anyway, yeah, we we land there. They connect, collect us, take us around. You know, get us some presents. Wonderful. Um, 
we also um, did another one uh, because you know it's easy so this was the final oculus um, and this was uh, another craft that we sent up and um, it did the same thing and this one came down again um, it's probably going to be the final flight of the red princess to 4b um, which because we're going to operate it into the 4c we do actually have some uh, some additions to it just to give it some more controllability when it's in on orbit um, and that's going to be it's it's longer it's longer term replacement but we do need to look at something uh, even longer term than that because it's just not got the, the control that we really really want um, but we'll, we'll we'll get there we will get there in the end and so that crashed down nicely and then we, we also have um, a launch of uh, the first privately funded communication satellite this is this is using a, a red bus one again and you'll notice we have an engine out which is um it's a it's not the first time we've had a spectre engine go out but it, it is a little annoying um the craft manages to cope with it because we've got a decent gimbal on there and it's an outside engine and, and so forth um but it does mean that we have to burn those spectres right to their limit um, they do have quite a long burn time because they're later models but it is really pushing their their ability and we get a spin on the craft at the end because of the fact that our fuel runs out in a certain way and um and so yeah we got a little bit of a weird spin there our upper stage has to fire straight away to try and get us into orbit we were a little concerned that we might actually have a problem with uh with not making to orbit but once we got that final stage going we are fine so mission complete so here we are the big ones this is eos 2a don't ask why it's called eos 2a um this is our our first attempt at an interplanetary craft we are launching on a white a white trident 1a um, nice big red fairing on the top to remind us of um, a, well looks like a lipstick don't it? I'm not gonna comment about that um, we're aiming to try and get it into orbit of Earth and then hopefully um, we can try and um, try and get it out further out where the aim for this mission is is mars we want to try and send the eos 2 to mars um we will have an eos 1 which will be going to venus um however mars has come up first we actually had prepped the eos ones first they they have the more capable um they were they're our primary mission we had time to get the eos 2s built and then we we rushed them at the end well we didn't rush them actually but we, we just got them in in time they are pretty much as up as heavy as we can put on this craft this this launch is tight it is so very tight for us to actually get into orbit um, we are concerned that we may actually end up not making it into orbit um, it is all about my flying ability at the moment and of course we're, we're, we're bringing into orbit in in line with the plane of the moon because we're going to do our transfer into interplanetary space from that inclination it should give us a little bit more bang for our book um, we also want to try to do it nice and lower down. We don't want to go too high in our orbit. So we're aiming about, hopefully, around 200 kilometers of an orbit. And this this final burn just takes us up there, and we get up there. And you see, there's there's a little bit of fuel left. It's probably the the closest we've been. Um, but we're not going to just send one of these EOS twos. We're going to send two of the EOS twos. Now the EOS two is pretty much the the Newton One Air bus, but with an added um, communications package on the top and just stretched just a little bit with some additional tankage on the bottom so we've got some additional uh, some additional pressurized tanks just added to the bottom um, and this basically takes us up to the maximum load capacity of these these white tridents um, we cannot go bigger without a, a significant upgrade to this rocket or a significant upgrade to our pad both of those things are pr problematic and expensive and we do not have the money right now we're investing a lot of money in this now the eos 2b um, we lost performance on booster engine number one um, and we decoupled it so we got rid of it um, we try in, we're going to try and get it into orbit now we do have extra delta v on the actual craft going there so if need be we can fire up that craft um, but we're hoping we can still make it we, we you know that that first stage failure was a big one for us this is this craft is a big chunk of money we've invested quite a lot in both of these two so we've run out of fuel there and we're into our final sort of launch stage now and we can see it's tight we can see it's you know it's it's going to be very tight on delta v 
Um, so already we start to do the maths and we're like, right, what is the minimum we need to do to get to Mars? Because that's going to be our target. We, we, we don't want to, we don't need to orbit Mars. We just need to get to Mars. This is likely, however, to impact our plans because one of the things that's special about, well, not special about this craft, but is notable about this craft is it, um, it doesn't have enough range to transmit from Mars. We do not have the tech for that, even with a tech upgrade. And you can see there we had to burn just a little bit. So once they're all, both in orbit, and this is this is around August the 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 fourth, I think, at the moment. Uh, they they wait in orbit for a while, so it's about no fifth fifth of October. Um, they both depart, and we're going to watch both of them depart at the same time because it's it's pretty boring. So the idea with these craft is we do not have range on our communication system to actually get a signal to and from them once they're at Mars. However, if we set up our departure burns nicely, we can try and just skim past Mars and cause it, if we're ever so careful, to uh, perturb our orbit, shall we say, just enough so that we get into a position where in a year to two years or three years, we're going to come reasonably close to Earth again. And all we need to do is get close enough for these craft to transmit their signal back, their data back. That's going to give us a load of data. It might not complete a mission that we're actually taking, but it might do it. But as they burn off, I'm going to say have a great one until next time.